I know there are only a few bad apples spoiling things for the rest of the boys in blue. The vast majority of these people are heroes. They're out there doing the things that need to be done to keep us safe as a bug in a rug. So anytime you hear about them abusing their power, trampling our rights, and even killing us, it's rare. Hardly ever happens. There are plenty of good cops out there who would never harm us in any way. Honest. Cops are a special breed. You see those badges and uniforms? Well, they grant them special rights that none of the rest of us frankly have. Besides, without cops, who would drive drunk, pass out in an unmarked patrol car in the middle of the road with the engine running, be handled with kid gloves by fellow officers, and not only not be fired, but receive a promotion? Nate Meyer was promoted to agent detective, which brought his salary up to $110,399. That was in Aurora, Colorado. See, Nate's not a bad apple. He just kind of made a mistake. Sure, if you or I did that, we'd be in jail. But that's beside the point. This guy is a hero, and none of the guys who helped him in his irresponsible and potentially deadly act are bad apples by any stretch of the imagination. Without all the good cops out there, who would brutalize, torment, cage, and mock 73-year-old Karen Garner like Loveland cops Austin Hopp, Daria Jalali, and Sergeant Metzger did? Of course the city had to shell out $3 million for the settlement. It's the darndest thing. Good cops cost their cities a lot of money, but they're still good. Without all those bad apples out there, how would NYPD cop Daniel Pantaleo choke Eric Gardner to death for selling cigarettes? I mean, cigarettes will kill you. We kind of owe the New York Police Department a debt of gratitude on this one. Without superhero cops protecting our right to be secure in our own homes, how would Dallas officer Amber Geiger ever be able to murder Botham John sitting on his couch in his own apartment eating ice cream? Without the boys in blue like Glendale, Arizona officer Matthew Schneider being highlighted as a shining example of bravery on shows like Live PD, who would lie about a blinker violation, tase an innocent Johnny Wheatcroft 11 times, pull down his shorts and tase him in the private parts in front of his screaming kids, and then have his department hide the body cam evidence from the public for two years. And because the Glendale Police Department is just crawling with good apples, Officer Schneider was approved by the city of Glendale to receive money from an accidental disability claim, which secured his pension and all of his benefits. Here's what Matthew Schneider said during his criminal hearing. Your Honor, I am standing before the court today as something in a million years that I would have never dreamed I'd be a convicted criminal. As you know, I come from a law enforcement family. It's hard to describe the shame I felt telling the people who raised me and were excellent role models that I'd be pleading guilty today. It was even harder when I had to tell my kids. I accept full responsibility for my actions on July 26, 2017. I tried to do my absolute best as a police officer and a human being that day, and it wasn't good enough. Hey, get in front of the car right now. Get in front of the car. Come on. You're all right. And of course, because there are fewer bad judges than there are bad cops, this good judge had this to say about Officer Schneider. You suffered for the last five and a half years the consequences of what happened. Your family has suffered the consequences of what happened. You want it again? Shut your mouth! Yes, I'm done f***ing around with you! As you picked yourself up, you found something else, and you're now excelling at that. Um, so I would see no purpose whatsoever to put you on probation I see what's happened in the last five and a half years and the loss of your career as a very severe punishment that's already happened to you. There's just a whole bunch of goodness swimming around in the good apple barrel of the wholesome justice system over there in Glendale, Arizona. 
Johnny Hurley was lucky enough to encounter all the good cops in Arvada, Colorado. See, Johnny, with no police training and with a gun in hand, took it upon himself to neutralize a man who intended to murder a whole slew of Arvada cops. Johnny stopped the man cold and took his AR-15 away from him only to be pierced with the good cop bullets coming out of the barrels of the guns held by the cowardly, I mean, good cops of Arvada who ran and hid while Johnny did their work for them. And of course, since all good cops deserve qualified immunity, the community in Arvada had to foot the bill of a couple million dollars in settlement fees. So rest in peace, Johnny. All the good cops out there, thank you for your service. Dennis Tuttle and Regina Nicholas know firsthand all the good these good cops can do when they had their home raided by the Houston Police Department after a swatting call was placed by their next door neighbor who lied about everything. Dennis, Regina, and their dog were all shot dead and all the good cops on the scene didn't record any of it on their body cams. 49-year-old Ronald Green was killed after being arrested by Louisiana State Police following a high-speed chase outside Monroe. During the arrest, he was stunned, punched, pepper sprayed, and placed in a chokehold. He was also dragged face down while handcuffed in shackles, and he was left face down for at least nine minutes. Ronald obviously died, and at least six state troopers were involved in the arrest, Five were criminally charged in December of 2022. When Green's corpse was brought to the hospital, police told doctors that his car had run into a tree, a story that doctors said didn't add up. Given the nature of Green's injuries and the fact that there were two stun gun probes lodged in his body, police later acknowledged that Green had died during a struggle but didn't mention specifics about any use of force by officers. 25-year-old Chase Allen was murdered by five Farmington, Utah cops for not having a driver's license. None of the officers were charged. So if you want to live, don't drive without a proper plate or driver's license in Farmington or you may be the next victim of all the good cops down there. 32-year-old Philando Castile was murdered by St. Anthony, Minnesota officer Euronimo Yanez during a traffic stop when Castile was attempting to pull out his concealed carry permit. The lawsuit resulted in a $3.8 million settlement for the city. Pest control specialist Daniel Shaver was murdered by Mesa cop Philip Brailsford, who was later acquitted. That cost Mesa $1.5 million. Homeless man Kelly Thomas was beaten to death by six Fullerton, California cops, while homeless man James Boyd was shot to death by Albuquerque police officers Sandy and Perez for camping on a mountain. Seriously injured crash victim Jordan Rivero was tortured and tased by Monroe County Deputy Dylan Hansen. And without all the good cops out there, who would terrorize a family for trying to save a pet? William Albrecht and his grief-stricken family were held at gunpoint by Bernardillo County, New Mexico cop Jeremy Navarez while they were frantically trying to get their dying dog Stella to the vet. And without Deputy Shane Day, badge number 5345 of the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, who would body slam a trained police dog and hit it in the face for no reason? By the way, if you or I did that, we'd be thrown in jail for assaulting a police officer. And this guy, Shane Day, had the audacity to assault a superior officer. Let's face it, dogs rule and cops want to rule while they actually drool. And without good cops, how could we ever have a Memphis jump out scorpion crew? 
the good cop crew who stopped 29-year-old Tyree Nichols without probable cause, then tortured him by punching him, kicking him, beating him with a baton, and pepper spraying him. Even when the medics arrived on the scene, they failed to administer care for 16 minutes. Obviously, Tyree didn't make it through the ordeal. And we've got people like Loveland, Colorado Police Department officer Dylan Miller, who was accused of sexually assaulting a teen while in uniform. The Florence, Colorado Police Department had no problem abusing and caging a woman for 17 days for buying goat milk. The list of all these good cops doing heinous things to people they're supposed to be protecting and serving seems infinite. But to keep this video short, we'll end with one more. Reportedly, 376 law enforcement officers descended upon a school in Texas where a mass shooting was in progress. For 77 minutes, nearly 400 cops did absolutely nothing while the shooter was inside the school picking kids off. With all the talk about all the good officers that are out there putting their lives on the line to protect us every single day, you think that a good 90, maybe even 95% of these cops would have rushed in to save all those kids. That means about 338 of them would have refused to stay in safety outside the school and would have put their lives on the line to save all those kids. But guess what? Not one of them did. So tell me again about all those good cops out there. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you want to support the channel further, grab a shirt, become a channel member, but more importantly, stand for your rights. Stand against tyranny. If you don't exercise your rights, you don't have them. The price of freedom is now and will always be eternal vigilance. And indifference to that notion is the means by which the people have and will secure their own oppression. Let's stop securing our own oppression and let's start today. I'll see you in the next video.